Good time to get in, uh, you know, uh, a call on the way forward for the markets. We have Christy Mathai, who's the fund manager, Equity Quantum AMC, joining in uh, to give her view on the market itself. Christy, um, what's your sense here? I mean, how do you go about the way, uh, you know, it's, it's positioned right now? And on the one hand, people say that there is still the growth opportunity, but on the other, there is valuation as well. So, given your view on the market right now, how are you positioning yourself? Thanks, thanks, Mangalam, for having me. Uh, so, clearly, you know, we run a value strategy and value portfolio uh, here at Quantum. So, we are, you know, to the latter half of what you said, we are concerned about the valuations that are broadly exhibited in the market. And uh, I think that continues to be a key uh, you know, key factor that kind of stops, uh, uh, you know, uh, from incrementally adding so much to this market at this point in time. So the key bets for us currently looks uh, mostly in the financial space. So uh, roughly 40% of our portfolio is into the broader financials, uh, which is roughly 25% into the banks and especially the private sector banks. And that is the uh, only place where we think there is still value uh, that can come through if you're taking a you know slightly longer term uh, you know thought process. IT remains another key bet, uh, but here we are you know watching uh, carefully you know in terms of management commentary and what's developing in US. Broadly, the other portion of the market, in our view, continues to be overvalued, and uh, we are largely staying away or trimming our positions in these pockets. Okay, all right. Uh, in particular for IT, what are you watching out for when it comes to the management commentary and what's your expectation from the Q2 numbers? Right. Uh, so, IT we have seen, you know, at least in the past few years, so bulk of the discretionary consumption that got started post, uh, you know, the COVID, uh, you know, the way what we saw. So, there is fair bit of cancellation in terms of a lot of projects and, uh, Incrementally, what we're seeing, a lot of companies reporting good order books, you know, the deal wins. But because of these discretionary consumption being cut down, there is, uh, you know, that is not, re uh, the whole is not really resulting in large revenue growth uh, for most of these companies. So incrementally, we think bulk of these discretionary cuts are, uh, you know, behind a lot of it, uh, you know, the pace of cut may be a bit slow. And uh, from here on, we think that, you um, you know, when we look at some of the consensus earnings numbers, if the rebound were to happen in U.S. markets and, you know, US, Europe markets, which are fairly large centers uh, for Indian IT services, so the earnings could positively surprise on the upside. But valuations, again, in some of these pockets are high. So we are largely sticking to the large cap names, uh, uh, you know, where we think there is some, you know, still some room. What do you have a view on the metals pack? That pack is doing well today, but uh, you know had been a bit of an underperformer post uh, down cycle. Worries about demand from China coming in, and now there are some comments from the Chinese uh, monetary authorities trying to pump prime the economy by easing some of the liquidity conditions. Do you think that could spell some positivity for our metal space, and is that investable? Right. So, uh, metals in our view is largely, you know, driven by what happens in China. Include, we have seen, you know, the Chinese uh, exporters kind of dumping the world market and kind of depressed pricing across in the metal space. So, incrementally, some of the news that most of here, uh, we are hearing is positive, but there have been quite a few false starts in the past as well. So, we are watchful in that sense. So, do we do have a metal name in our portfolio, but... Uh, this would not be a great time to enter, you know, uh, typically these, uh, you know, we want to buy companies which have, uh, you know, either a, a, a great group supporting them or, you know, when their leverage is kind of trending down or the prices are pretty, you know, uh, in the worst phase, uh, that would be a great time to enter some of these names, which does not seem to be the case now. So we're largely holding on to our position and uh, incrementally watching out how this Chinese commentary translates into the actual execution. Okay. Well, I just wanted uh, your sense on the entire setup for the markets uh, now, Christy. You know, the Nifty is given returns of 19% year to date. The mid caps are up over around 30 odd percent. What's your strategy? What are you advising clients? Uh, probably take some profits off the mid caps or. Uh, and change and shift uh, their money towards the frontliners, or would you continue probably looking at the mid caps for further gains? 
yeah so our uh, broadly advice is you know we should to any investor is we should largely moderate our uh, return expectations from the market it's been two fairly good years in the market and typically uh, you know as the history suggest uh, you know there could be some moderation uh, that could be coming uh, but again uh, we cannot really get out of the market as such because you know if you kind of miss out uh, you know being part of the market you uh, uh, kind of uh, you know uh, your returns are not so great in the long term so st- strategy is to move away from the pockets which have done extremely well which includes large and mid cap and there is some bit of euphoria move into the large caps especially you would have to look at the portfolio construct very carefully you know at least from a value manager point of view we want to deploy where you know there is bulk of value which remains uh, in our view in the financial space and we are also sitting with fairly uh, uh, sizable chunk of cash as well roughly around 15% which we would look to de- deploy as in when the market corrects so you know advice is a bit of caution and uh, you know expectation of return moderation going ahead all right expectation of return moderation with advice of caution 15% is the cash that you're sitting on uh, let's wrap it up with uh, you know uh, the consumer space a lot of people are hoping for rural recovery and thereby showing their proclivity towards you know uh, the staples uh, just wanted your thoughts on that um, are you looking to back right. some of the staples because falls right in your uh, you know having not having run and is a large cap uh, sort of thesis yeah so i think uh, from a staples perspective looks like the market has priced in a lot of positives that could come even from a rural recovery point of view like you know and we are just about hearing some bit of improvement within the rural bucket but when you our concern is broadly when you look at the whole staples piece you know of course there are great companies which extremely high return ratios and so on and so forth but the valuations that they tend to trade at is this uh, beyond our comfort zone so this is a place we would love to own but at lower valuations uh, so that remains a chief concern and we also have to see whether the rural recovery which is touted about so much actually plays out uh, that is also a point to keenly watch out for so incremental money you know where is it that you're finding valuation yeah. comfort right now if you could give us your top two sector overweights and in that if you could you know probably give us a bunch of names as well without delving into specifics right so uh, if you look at the past quarter or two quarters where we have exactly deployed is essentially into private sector banks uh, largely to the top banks uh, you know because uh, you know there is reasonable comfort on valuation we know there are certain concerns such as moderation and credit growth you know uh, you know the whole credit to deposit ratio being higher but we largely see these uh, you know themes as transitory and probably when you are taking a slightly longer term view you know most of these banks are in the right place to deliver growth at the right valuation the other pocket is like we have been incrementally finding op- uh, you know opportunities within uh, the life insurer pack so we have deployed uh, you know some incremental cash that is there into those uh, but you know these are the only places we have largely trimmed our allocation notos and you know most of the other sectors hmm just quickly before we let you go have you looked at the mnc space uh, the reason i ask is that stocks such as astrazeneca are doing extremely well today very good uh, price action on that counter and you know i was just reading about the kind of growth that they're seeing in the indian market as well are those portfolio plays according to you yeah so not again specific to the name but uh, within the whole pharma space we are fair bit deployed in the pharma space uh, it is uh, though we are slightly trimming in some of our allocations because you know the us uh, the pricing has continued to surprise us it continued to be extremely strong and the india bit is doing what it used to do uh, you know fair bit of growth uh, very steady state growth so the pharma as an allocation has remained you know uh, for quite some time in our pol- uh, portfolios mm-hmm. but incrementally we have been trimming a bit because some of them are, we think have run up too far ahead all right christy thank you so much for joining in and giving us your view on uh, the sectors your top picks and uh, things to avoid sitting on 15% cash preferring large caps to mid caps right now hoping for some growth to come by and at the same time liking only the private sector financials and some of the life insurance companies in the very recent past take a short break come back at you more on the markets and get you about uh, get you some insight into the new market debut on today